Okay, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jack Ahern, who will be joining us today to tell us about sustainable cities. So. big idea in science and many fields is this paradigm shift from the equilibrium view of the world to the non-equilibrium view. In the equilibrium view of the world, um, really the, the 20th century was about the equilibrium view of the world. The era of modernism, of science and technology um, had a great faith that we can, we can figure everything out, we can make it work through science and technology. We, we, this, we can make it work. <clears throat> Late in the 20th century, these ideas like chaos theory started to come up. And people said, wait a minute. You know, the systems like an urban system or an ecosystem are more characterized by irregularity, unpredictability, uncertainty than they are for predictability and stability. Change is the order of the day, not stability. Get used to it, deal with it. So if you think if you if you buy this, and here are some parallel terms: linear network, modern, postmodern, open, closed, reductionistic, holistic, tactical, strategic, etc. If you can understand this argument, and if you buy this argument, which by the way is um, you could you could have this in an engineering this this uh, discussion in an engineering class, you could have it in a biology class. You could have it in an economics class. You could talk about this anywhere. This is the new view of the world. This is your world, the uncertain, chaotic, unpredictable, non-equilibrium world. So if you buy that view of the world, and then if you say, OK, well, wait a minute. We want sustainability, but we want sustainability, and everything's unpredictable and uncertain. How, how do we do that? How do you make things last and be permanent when everything is always changing? Good question, right? So the way you do that is with the idea of resilience, which is kind of on the, I think, on the frontier of sustainable thinking. This is, this is the sustainability thinking in the non-equilibrium world is thinking about safe to fail. It's not possible to make it fail safe. Not going to happen. Can't do it by definition because there's too much unpredictability and uncertainty. So better, the, the wise, prudent person would, <coughs> would say, no, let's, how do we make the system have the capacity to respond after it fails? That's the safe to fail strategy and the safe to fail way of thinking. And this is really at the frontier. There aren't a whole lot of examples of how to do this. There are some. Well. Uh, I will submit this is, um, this is the most important thing I'm going to talk about today, and this is something that you really ought to remember. It's a, it's a sideways figure eight or an infinity um, symbol, right? This is the, um, a diagram from Pauling and Gunderson, very important ecologists, about the adaptive cycle of systems. And this, this diagram explains how systems change and respond as they go through cycles of disturbance and recovery. Remember, every system is going to be disturbed. And there will be uh, unexpected, unpredictable things happening. Hurricanes, insect infestations, economic collapses, political changes, uh, social issues. Any system you look at is going to go through cycles of stability and change. So in the non-equilibrium view of the world, uh, the K phase is the phase, this is, where, this is where we kind of want to be, right? This is the phase of stability, and we are conserving things. Uh, don't rock the boat. The system is working well. Uh, we want to conserve it. We want to keep things going. But, you know, so this is the, um, this is the, this is the 90s, right, when the, uh, economically. This is the 1990s when we were, you know, the dot-com bull. We were on top of the world. Everything was great. There was plenty of money. And now, now we're definitely down here. We're definitely down here in the economic cycle. This is the omega stage, the stage of disturbance. <clears throat> and we are in, we're in a free fall, you know? And we, let's, hope, let's hope that we can do this. This is what our man uh, Obama is trying to do, and other folks. We're trying to reorganize the system, 
and have it recover in a juvenile stage and get back to this. If, if the system is resilient, it will go through this called an adaptive cycle. Stability, release, reorganization, exploitation. The system will go through those phases. This is developed from ecology, but it applies also to socioeconomic and other systems. And if the system is not resilient, when it goes into the disturbance phase, it can go into a different state. You know? And that's generally where we don't want to be, but it can happen. And these adaptive cycles are happening all the time in every system, and they're not always in phase. One of them might be in this phase, one might be in this phase, but they're interconnected. And this is how systems thinkers describe this behavior of complex systems in the context of a non-equilibrium view of the world. It's really, um, it's very abstract on one hand, but it's also extremely relevant and important to understand no matter what direction you go into. This is the, this is the state of the art, I would say, in sustainability thinking about, about resilience. You know? Resilience matters. The disturbance is going to happen. It's really all about how do we respond to that disturbance. Uh, one of the key characteristics of resilient systems is diversity. So if you talk about ecosystems without people, ecosystems that are severely disturbed by natural process, fire, hurricane, insect infestation, something, wipes out the forest, how does the forest recover? It recovers because there's going to be some species that the insects didn't eat, or that, that didn't burn, or that were able to respond. And having a whole bunch of diversity in there, um, a nice quote that I read by an a, a ecologist from Canada, Lister, says, uh, biodiversity is like uh, a library of information. Some of it we've read and understand. Some of these books we haven't even opened yet. But the prudent person would keep that library intact because someday, one of those species might provide the clue to resilience in the future. So diversity is one of the characteristics for resilience. And of course it relates to, um, to cultural issues as well. When you have a diverse society, when there's a disturbance, different sectors of society suffer or are, are affected differently, and different sectors of society are going to be more likely or less likely to, likely to be able to respond. So diversity is a big idea to make it work. Here's an example from uh, biology. It's called uh, the uh, concept of metapopulation. The green areas represent habitat patches that have species living in them. And the blue dots represent habitat patches that don't have species living in them. So say these are patches of forest and we're looking at uh, woodpeckers. And woodpeckers are a little fussy where they live. They don't live everywhere. Um, and the, wood, and the, the patches of forest are spread around Amherst, and the woodpeckers can move in between them. In the metapopulation idea, this whole thing is a population. Over time, these woodpeckers breed with these, they breed with these, they breed with these. So this is a population um, that exists over space. At any point in time, this the uh, patch of forest might not have woodpeckers. They got killed by some other animal. They, uh, they failed to breed. Uh, something happened here. But in the metapopulation, when this patch goes to blue, in, if you go, go back in another period of time, it can be reoccupied by species moving from here. So this is an example of how species can be resilient to disturbance, right? If you look at any one patch over time, there might be no species there, or they might be there. <clears throat> it's also called uh, winking patches, right? Like winking on, winking off. Over time, they wink on, they wink off, but overall, the whole system keeps these species alive. So it's a nice example of resilience of uh, wildlife species in a complex, heterogeneous landscape. I'm happy to take any questions.